Now, recently there was a big protest uh, outside of a Phoenix uh, Islamic Community Center. Uh, they called it a free speech event. They were supposed to draw Mohammed cartoons, but they forgot. Maybe because they don't have any hands free because they were all carrying weapons. Uh, so that, that was the protest. People against the Muslims uh, there. Uh, they picked that particular community center because uh, two of the people who had gone and done the shooting in Garland, Texas, uh, had at some point attended that Islamic community center. Now, if you held churches to that same, uh, you know, standard, there'd be a lot of protests outside a lot of churches. But obviously, that's not the way uh, we think here in America, right or wrong. So. Uh, the guy putting this uh, protest together, John Ritzheimer, is very concerned, he says, uh, about people threatening him. Now, look, I'm going to show you the pictures from the event in a second. But he, he got some online threats. <laughs> Welcome to our world, buddy. <laughs> Who doesn't get online threats? Like, he's gone all, like, dramatic over this. I mean, the, he's like, oh, my God, they threatened me. Okay, all right. Bring it down, dude. He says that's, quote, terrorism right here in America. Okay, now, I'm going to show you terrorism in a second, but again, he says, quote, when you start trying to oppress American citizens, people will fight back. Well, okay, now let's show you some pictures uh, of the event. We're going to show you the protesters and the counter-protesters. Now, the guys in the military gear with the heavy uh, armaments, I assume, obviously, those are the Muslims, right? They're the ones terrorizing people by showing up with all those weapons uh, and saying, well, obviously they might use them. They might, quote, unquote, fight back. Oh, no, those are the guys protesting the Muslims. <laughs> so these are the ones being terrorized? Let, let me show you the counter-protesters who also, sh wow, look at that, terrorizing with a pink heart sign about love. Wow, they, they do look menacing. Now let me show you more protesters. These are the right-wing guys. I'd be a little bit more afraid of that guy than the counter-protesters. Let's show you the counter-protesters again. Yeah, I don't think anybody's getting terrorized by these guys. <laughs> okay, these are good folks, uh, Muslim and otherwise, who showed up, a lot of non-Muslims obviously, uh, to say, hey, you know what, we're not going to stand for this. You're not going to come out here and demagogue people and threaten them with your weapons. Now this is the organizer, John uh, Ritzheimer. He thinks he's clever, uh, and so he came with T-shirts, as did others, that said on it, uh, fuck Islam. Uh, and he's carrying an American flag as if he represents us. Well, he most assuredly does not. Let me show you one other protester. Now, you guys show up with all this weaponry. I mean, this guy almost looks like ISIS. What is that mask? I mean, that mask is literally meant to scare people. And you guys are the ones not doing the terrorizing. You cowards are the ones that are terrorized? You come in with all these weapons, and you come in in your military fatigues, you come in in your mass, and then you say, oh my God, I'm so scared. They did an online threat. Dude, you showed up with weapons. Now, believe me, anybody carries out any of those threats, we're all against them, of course. Of course we are, right? But we're also against you coming out and scaring the living bejesus out of people in those outfits and those weapons. Imagine if the situation was turned around. Muslims show up with weapons outside of an event they don't like. For example, if they had sh uh, shown up outside of the Draw Muhammad cartoon event, heavily uh, weaponized, right? Like they've got all the same exact gear uh, to the T, every piece of clothing, every weapon there, but a bunch of Muslims show up like that. People's heads would explode. Oh my God, ISIS is here, the jihad has arrived. Okay, if these guys were Muslim, what do you think the reaction would be? No, but they're right-wingers, so they're allowed to bring any weapons they like. They're allowed to scare people as much as like they like it. They're allowed to intimidate people as much as they like. They're allowed to do whatever the hell they want. Okay, so now we go to uh, the portion of the story where it gets funny. So this Ritzheimer guy is obviously a scam artist, and so the whole thing was to try to make money. What a loser. What an unbelievable, epic loser. So he starts a GoFundMe campaign because this worked for others. You remember that pizza parlor that said we won't serve gay weddings as if they would ever be a pizza at any wedding, let alone a gay wedding? Uh, well, they got $800,000. So they, look, the conservatives, there's a sucker born every minute. That's why Huckabee says his newsletter is talking about miracle cures. All these guys do it, right? Like, hey, if these idiots believe that science is false 
and you know, but you, you should believe in fairy tales that happened 2,000 years ago that no one could possibly verify. Well, they'll believe anything. So I could do Pat Robertson sells a miracle shake. So this Ritzheimer guy thinks I'm going to get rich. So he does a GoFundMe campaign. He says, "Hello to all my fellow Americans. I am starting this campaign to humbly ask for donations so that I may provide security for my family. I don't fear for myself." But I fear for them, and it is truly sad that any American would have to endure this kind of la 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 la, and he goes on, right? I love this, right? Guy shows up with all this weaponry, and then he's like, oh my God, they've threatened me. I'm not scared. I'm not scared. No, 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 no. Oh, but my, my, kid, my family, I'm worried about them. It, what? Wait, <laughs> but nobody showed up at your house with weapons. You showed up at their place with weapons. No, 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 but send me money, send me money. <laughs> I'm going to get rich. I'm going to get $800,000. You know how much he was trying to raise? $10 million. You know how much he raised? $300. What? Thank the Lord. And after three days of this grotesque failure, he said, yeah, yeah, let's wrap it up. Anyway, yeah, I didn't mean that. I mean, no, no I'm fine, I'm fine. No, no, $300. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move on. You scam artist. So, now there is a happy ending to this story, believe it or not. Um, now, as I told you, some of the t-shirts uh, that people were proudly wearing had the logo or the saying, fuck Islam. Now, not particularly clever, but it is what it is, right? And they're trying to say like, oh, I can say anything I want, it's a free country. It's true, you can say anything you want, it is a free country. I, I don't agree with the manner in which you've said it. I I'm uh, against Islam, I wouldn't have said it in exactly that way, I certainly wouldn't have gone to people's place of worship and worn that shirt, but I get it and you're allowed it, right? I would put the weapons away, but you wear anything you like on a shirt. Now, a couple of these guys uh, decided to go inside the mosque and see what's happening there. Well, first of all, I like those guys, they're at least a little bit more open-minded, I hope they left their weapons behind, and apparently they did. So here's where the Washington Post picks up the story and where it gets interesting. Uh, Jason Legger, a Phoenix resident, wearing one of the profanity lace sh uh, shirts, accepted an invitation to join the evening prayer inside the mosque and said the experience changed them. It was something I've never seen before. I took, off, took my shoes off, I kneeled, he said. Okay, you know what happened? He realized, oh yeah, they're praying. That's why they came here, just like in a church. Oh, okay, let me read you more. He said, I saw a bunch of peaceful people, uh, we all got along, uh, they made me feel welcome, you know. I just think everybody's points are getting misconstrued, saying things out of emotion, saying things they don't believe. Now look, here's a guy who showed up uh, with a Fuck Islam t-shirt and was part of that clownish crowd that I just showed you, but at least he was open-minded enough to go talk to the other side. And for that, I love him. Well, I mean, that, that's exactly what we're supposed to do as Americans. We both got freedom of speech, so use it to talk to one another, and you might find out that they're a lot more similar to you, to you than you think. Actually, this also happened to a second guy. Again, Washington Post picks that story up. Paul Griffin, who had earlier said he didn't care if his T-shirt was offensive, assured a small crowd of Muslims at the end of the rally that he wouldn't wear it again. He said, I promise the next time you see me, I won't be wearing this shirt. And while he told that to a man while shaking his hand and smiling, he said, I won't wear it again. Hey, look at that, silver lining in a dark cloud. Guys go in uh, with uh, closed minds, they come out with open minds, bless their hearts, at least these two guys for doing the right thing and having an actual dialogue and figuring out that the person across the street from you is a human being that is enormously similar to you. 